In the last video, we briefly talked about what the React library is and why people use it. So in this video, I want to focus on one part of React, and that is components. Now I say one part, but components actually encapsulate everything that React offers. React has no controllers or models, directives, directives or view models, and so on. Uh, some of you may have a background in something like Angular 2 or uh, some other framework. And even though Angular 2 has components, which do actually work in a similar way to React, it also has stuff that operates outside of the component context. In React, at least React Core, everything is contained in a component. So let's take a look at a physical example. So we have this widget on the left, which is a list of products along with a search or filter box input. And you can see we have different colors wrapped around certain areas of the UI. These are all different components. They all work together, uh, but they're also contained in their own environment. And if we look on the diagram on the right, it shows us uh, the different components and how they're related. So we have the filterable product table. That would be the entire thing, so kind of like a, a wrapper component. Then we have the search bar, which is outlined in blue. We have the product table which is outlined in green, the product category row, which is in blue, and then the product rows, which are in red. So you can see we, have, we can have multiple instances of the same component. Now it is entirely possible to just have this be one whole component and not break them down like this, but to get the best out of React, it is a good idea to, to pretty much make everything a component that you can. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the advantages of React components. So they are self-contained. Everything, all the functionality that has to do with a certain part of the UI is contained in, in a component. Um, all the functions, all of the state, the properties, everything. Components are composable. They can be uh, assembled in various combinations to satisfy whatever the, the requirements are. They are reusable, okay, so you can reuse them in the same application as well as in another application. They're more maintainable, and they are testable. So let's go ahead and look at a very simple component from React. So we have a class, and it's called My Component, and it's going to extend React.Component. All right, so this is a JavaScript ES2015 class. And in the class, we have a render function or a render method. And this is a lifecycle method. When you work with React components, there are certain lifecycle methods or lifecycle hooks that you can actually hook into at certain points of the component rendering uh, or loading. So render is the only one that's actually required. Uh, for instance, there's a, a lifecycle method called component will mount, which fires off before the component is actually mounted. All right, so. Uh, there's component did mount, which will fire off after it's mounted, and that's where you would do, uh, if you wanted to do, for instance, an AJAX request to some other external API, that's where you would do it. All right, so the render is required, and this is where we're going to re return the actual content. Okay, so here we just have a div, and inside that div we have an H1, and then the text my component. All right, now when you return uh, markup like this, this is actually JSX, okay, it's not um, HTML, it's an XML-like syntax that runs within JavaScript. Um, there are a couple differences, for instance, you can't use the class attribute on elements, you have to use class name. Same thing with the for attribute, you can't use that, you have to use HTML4. So there's just a, a couple really um, minimal differences in the syntax. Now, it's also important to know that when you return this, it has to be all wrapped in one element. Okay, you can have as many elements as you want inside these divs, but you can't have, for instance, another div right under this one and return two of them. It has to be wrapped in one. Now, down here, we're going to use the React DOM.render method. We're going to pass in my component in the format of an XML tag, and then the second parameter is going to be where we want to insert that which here we're saying we want to find the element with the ID of app and insert it into that. Okay, so this would be in your HTML, and we have a div with the ID of app. That's where our component would show up. 
Now we can also have properties passed into our components. So this is, um, again, we have the my component, and this time you'll see that we have this hello and then this.props.name. So this is uh, a prop or a property. And down here where we have our render, you can see we're passing in what looks like an attribute called name equal to the value of John Doe. So we're passing this property of name into the component and we can use it with this.props.name. All right, so that's the basics of components. Uh, what I want to do now is just jump into React and just give you a really quick example of creating a component.